All right, so osteopetrosis is a disease where you have defective osteoclasts because they are unable to generate that acidic environment, and we need that for bone resorption. So you have poor bone resorption, so your bone is going to build up, and it's going to be very dense, but it's going to be terrible architecture because you need that remodeling. Um, so it's just, it's just, so what you have is you have dense but brittle bones, and these fracture easily. Clinical features of this disease include, again, easily fractures, so easy bone fractures. Um, you're going to get overgrowth of the bone into bone marrow. So what you're going to get is you're going to get pancytopenia. So pancytopenia means uh, all those blood products are low, so you have poor red blood cells, poor platelets, and poor white blood cell production. You're going to get extramedullary hematopoiesis. So remember, you normally make um, make blood in your bone marrow, but you can also make it in other parts of your body, such as the spleen, the liver, and lymph nodes. So you're going to start doing that. So you're gonna enlargement of all those structures. Um, next, you can have cranial nerve impingements. Again, your skull and your very tight area. If you're going to enlarge bones because um, it's super dense, super um, and your osteoclast can can't shave them down, you can get impingements of your cranial nerves, so you can get deficits there. And then your foramen magnum, which I've highlighted here, can become narrowed because, again, too much bone is built. And then that can lead to poor CSF flow and um, hydrocephalus. So the treatment here is um, bone marrow transplant. Because if you remember, remember what osteoclasts are derived from. Remember they come from monocyte and slash macrophage precursors. Remember both of those eat stuff up. So if you replace the bone marrow, you can actually get normal, act, um, non-defective osteoclasts, and that will correct all the um, pathology. Next disease is rickets slash osteomalacia. Um, these are the same disease pretty much, but one is for kids, one is for adults. So the, ba the underlying problem here is that you have poor mineral mineralization of osteoid. Remember um, osteoblast, remember how that works for bone formation? Remember how osteoblast deposit osteoid, which is made up of type 1 collagen, gelatinous substance with type 1 collagen. And remember how that's mineralized? Remember you need calcium and phosphate. So if you have low vitamin D and thus low calcium and phosphate, you're going to get soft bones because you're just going to get osteoid and no mineralization, which makes it hard. Um, rickets is when you have low vitamin D in children, and osteomalacia is when you have low vitamin D in adults. And vitamin D is important to increase serum calcium and phosphate, and it does it in multiple ways. First way, intestinal absorption of calcium and phosphate. Second way, reabsorption of calcium and phosphate in the kidney. And finally, um, your bones contain a lot of calcium and phosphate, so um, vitamin D can and, um, increase bone resorption to increase that calcium and phosphate. Now rickets, uh, the reason why we do divide um, poor vitamin D into rickets and osteomalacia is because um, the, there's a, the key difference is that rickets in children have, um, they have open growth plates, adults have cr closed growth plates. So rickets will have open growth plates. Patients will have bold legs, as you can see here, that's called genuverum. You can have rachitic, rachitic ro rosary, and that's because this is enlargement of the costochondral junction. So this is cartilage by the sternum, and you have rib bones. You have enlargement. These are deposits of osteoid because your, your osteoblasts are dropping the osteoid, but it's not getting mineralized. So when you keep dropping and keep dropping, you get these um, basically rosary-looking things. Next, you're also going to get, get frontal bossing and a soft skull. Again, it's soft because you have poor mineralization, and it's um, in a large forehead because, you have again, it's all that osteoid is getting deposited. Osteomalacia is pretty simple. Um, you have soft bones, uh, you have bone pain, and you have increased fracture risk because they're just weak and soft. Um, there's no mineralization. So that's it for our rickets and osteomalacia. Next is Paget's disease. The problem here is an overactive disordered bone remodeling. And the, key, and the important key word is that it's in localized parts of the body and especially the skull. We'll see why that's important. So first of all, you're going to start with the lytic phase with overactive osteoclasts. So you're going to have increased breakdown. 
then you're gonna have a mixed phase with increased activity of both osteoclast and osteoblast. And then finally, you're gonna have a high osteoblast activity only, so that's, os that's a sclerotic phase. So what, what's gonna happen is you have poor bone remodeling, so you have poor bone quality. Um, you're gonna have thickened and deformed bone that fractures easily. And on biopsy, you're going to see a mosaic pattern of woven and lamellar bones. You're going to see both of those and be all mixed together, so mosaic pattern. So if you see a mosaic pattern on biopsy, that's Packett's disease. The clinical features is going to be really related to this um, localized, this um, focus on the skull. Uh, first of all, you can have bone pain because of micro fractures, because again, it's poor for quality. Uh, if you're involved in the skull, you can have uh, skull thickening. So your hat size is going to increase. Uh, you can have hearing loss because of auditory foramen narrowing. And these patients can actually develop something called arteriovenous shunts. So that is um, just the, there's going to be connection between the arteries and the veins. There's going to be increased blood flow. And then so increased blood flow is going to stress out the heart and it's going to lead to high output heart failure. You can have isolated ALP. Um, that's a key thing. So only APL, ALP up and other lab nodes or other lab values are normal. That's probably Paget's disease. Treatment here, um, you can have bisphosphonates. Remember, bisphosphonates inhibit osteoclasts and bone resorption. And you can have calcitonin, which is just um, increasing the quality of your bones, puts calcium into your bones. Uh, finally, we have osteomyelitis. Um, actually, not finally, this is the second last one. Osteomyelitis from the name, you can tell osteobone-itis, myel is um, infection, so infection of your marrow and bone, which I've poorly drawn over here. Just trying to illustrate to you that it's like infection of the bone itself and the marrow. You can have either an exogenous or hematogenous spread. So it can be spread from blood vessels that um, carrying this bacteria that seed it. Um, this is usually seen in children, or you can have an open wound. And it's more commonly seen in adults. And this is pretty simple. It's an infection, bone marrow, bone and bone marrow infection. So you're going to get pain. It's going to be signs of infection like fever and increased white blood cells. And you diagnose it with a bone culture. Pretty simple. Um, there's a couple things to memorize. There's a couple risk factors. I don't know if you learned these yet, but it's useful to test yourself. So the most common risk factor, if, do, you, do you know... Um, the most common bacteria, if there's no risk factors, the most common bacteria overall, what is it? It's Staph aureus. Okay, that's 90% of cases. So if you have no idea, just get Staph aureus. If the patient is an IV drug user or they had a plantar puncture wound, which is they stepped on a rusty nail or something, and they get an infection or they have diabetes, then, um, it's probably bacteria, it's probably Pseudomonas. It might be Staph aureus though. If you have sickle cell, then the bacteria is probably Salmonella, I'm sure. You probably know this. You probably watch Sketchy Micro. Um, plug for Sketchy Micro if you if you don't use it. It's super useful. Um, if you have a prosthetic joint replacement, the most likely bacteria is Staph epidermidis. Remember that it really likes those joints. Um, cat and dog bite bacteria, Pasteurella. And if you're young and sexually active, what's the most common? Neisseria gonorrhea. Okay. Finally, osteonecrosis. So this is necrosis of the bone, and that's because of impaired blood supply, so ischemia, and the bone dies. The most common places can happen is the femoral head, which is um, the hip joint. And there's the medial circumflex artery, which I've drawn out here. So it's, it's this thing right here. And it's, it's, a, it's a lone artery perfusing a section of this, of this femoral head. So this, if you lose perfusion here, you're going to get necrosis of the femoral head. Um, it's avascular necrosis. So there's a lot of causes for this that you probably need to know. But again, it's just causes that can lead to poor blood perfusion. So the most common is thrombotic or embolic occlusion. And not um, just common cause. Um, that can be due to sickle cell disease. So a cell sickle, and they occlude the, the artery. You can have decompression sickness. Um, that's because dissolved gases will come out of solution in your blood and they'll become bubbles and they will block everything up. Another common one is having um, using steroids, then you, you can often see uh, osteonecrosis. Other common ones include alcohol abuse and trauma and vasculitis. 
uh, very general clinical features of pain and on weight bearing and decreased range of motion. Finally, this is an overview of, again, you can probably stop watching here, but this is very useful just to look over when you have time to study. We're going to review the pathophysiology and then um, lab values for each of these diseases. So do you remember pathophysiology for adrochondroplasia? Remember, it's the FGFR3 mutation leading to impaired endochondral ossification. And remember that short limbs are, uh, your limbs are affected, so you get short limbs. Lab values, completely normal. Osteogenesis imperfecta, what was the defect? Remember, it's defective type 1 collagen. Um, type 1 collagen leading to weak bones. Lab values, totally normal. How about osteoporosis? What was the problem in osteoporosis? What is osteoporosis? It's a problem with low bone density and um, poor bone strength, uh, leading to easy fractures. And what were the lab values in osteoporosis? Remember, that was totally normal. How about osteopetrosis? Well, the problem here is, remember, it's a problem of defective osteoclast, so they're not working. Um, so now you get an overgrowth of bone, but they're super dense, but they're also super brittle, so easy fractures. Uh, what were the lab values here? Um, pretty much normal, but sometimes you, I mean, you can have maybe a slightly decreased calcium because remember, sometimes you need to resorb, resorb bone to um, get some calcium in your blood, and if in osteoporosis, all that calcium is getting mineralized into bone, so it's low in the serum. Now, osteomalacia and what's the problem here. Remember, it's a low vitamin D and vitamin D, uh, low vitamin D leading to poor mineralization of the osteoid, so you get soft bones. Um, what will be your lab values? Well, this one's pretty, you can deduce it all just by knowing low vitamin D. Uh, so your calcium, vitamin, vitamin D um, increases calcium and phosphate, so those are going to be low. How about ALP and PTH? Um, well, ALP, remember, remember what is that? Remember that's a marker of osteoblast activity. Um, and your osteoblasts are still working. They're dumping tons of osteoids. It's just not getting mineralized. And PTH, how would that work? Well, PTH responds to calcium. So if you have low calcium, PTH will respond appropriately by increasing to increase your calcium levels. So that's what's going to happen. Packus disease. What is the problem in Paget's? Well, Paget's is a problem of overactive osteoclast and osteoblast. Remember that? It's, a, it's both. So you get a mosaic pattern. You get uh, super disordered remodeling. It's very poor quality. Um, what will calcium and phosphate levels be? They'll be normal. Um, how about Alkphos? Well, Alkphos, I thought that was a little tricky, but Alkphos actually goes up because... Remember that alkphos is a marker of osteoblast activity. Uh, well, osteoblasts are definitely working extra hard. And osteoclasts also work hard. Remember, osteoblasts are needed to activate osteoclasts. So, um, so, so osteoblasts are activating osteoclasts, so you have increased alkphos. And your PTH will be normal because your calcium and your phosphate are normal. PTH pretty much responds to the calcium levels. Uh, primary hyperparathyroidism, I didn't really talk about, but you can have multiple causes. You can have the parathyroid being hyperplasia, you can have ad adenoma, or you can have a carcinoma for the cancer of the parathyroid. Um, what does parathyroid do? Remember, parathyroid increases your calcium and decreases your phosphate. So that's what you're going to see. What's going to happen with your ALP? Remember that parathyroid will act on osteoblasts. So remember, it act activates osteoclasts indirectly by activating, on os activating osteoblasts. So osteoblasts will be, work will be more active, so you have increased ALP. And obviously, PTH is high in hyperparathyroidism. Um, secondary hyperparathyroidism, the thing that happens here is that you have um, chronic kidney, usually it's chronic kidney disease leading to poor activation of vitamin D uh, and then you have poor uh, decreased phosphate excretion. So 
then your body your body will sense that you you have low calcium and, and increased phosphate and um, it's going to tell a parathi parathyroid hormone to increase it's going to kick up that parathyroid hormone to correct that so that's why you have hyper you have increased parathyroid hormone but that's because your calcium is too low and because your phosphate is too high and that is because your kidneys are not working so obviously i just said calcium is going to be low phosphate is going to be high um, what's the ALP going to be like? The same idea as primary. Um, parathyroid hormone is still going to activate your osteoblast to activate your osteoclast. So osteobla osteoblast will be um, secreting more ALP, so that's increased. And then your parathyroid hormone is increased. So all of this you don't need to memorize. If you understand um, this, if you understand this, and you understand the pathophysiology, you don't have to memorize it. So that is it for all our bone disorders.